Welcome to Heads vs. Feds, where the ultimate odd couple give their take on the day's drug war news stories. Uh, my name is Steve Hager. I'm the former editor of High Times Magazine. And I'm Bob Stutman, former head of the Drug Enforcement Administration office in New York. So we got an interesting story today, Bob. I noticed The Economist printed a, a poll today showing that if you exclude the people that don't know, the people that responded to should marijuana be legalized, taxed, and regulated, shows an almost two to one in favor at the moment. And of course, it's always been, you know, 90% of the under 30 year olds strongly in favor of legalization and regulation. What's interesting for the first time is that even people 65 and older showing a slight majority right now in favor. So uh, I can uh, tell you exactly what The Economist, well-respected magazine, says. If, hey, I, if our poll is right, then it is only a matter of time before laws start to change. I love it when the Brits tell us what we're going to be doing in our country. As you know, Steve, The Economist is a British printed magazine, is a British-based magazine, and they obviously know very little about American culture. Uh, a lot of polls come across that way. First of all, I think this poll is skewered. It leaves out the undecideds, which when factored in will change the numbers significantly. But that's really a secondary issue. When you look at California, the pre-polls of Prop uh, 10 in California uh, showed it winning by about 60%. It lost by 8%. Not a small amount, as the economists call it. We all know that 8% in most elections is a landslide. Uh, I guess I would argue with you that a lot of people say things to the polls, as they did in California, but when the most liberal state in the United States, by far the most liberal state in the United States, could not pass recreational cannabis, I'm not awake at night worrying that this whole country is going to pot. Polls are polls, voting is voting. And when people understand what they're buying into, as happened in California, they back off and say, do we really need this? If we legalize marijuana, it is a social experiment from which there is no return. And I do not believe that the majority of Americans are in favor of, uh, of another intoxicant on top of the problem we have with alcohol today. All right, we got a flash news report from uh, Montana. A very favorite state of mine. Let me tell you something about Montana, Steve. Last fall, I spent 10 days in Montana working with two school systems, Bozeman and Belgrade. In fact, I'm going back shortly to do another school system. I probably talked to about 20,000 high school students. The one thing that truly shocked me, and I told this to both the school boards and the public, was how many high school kids would say to me, why should I not be smoking marijuana? My parents have a green card and I see them smoking it at home. And the number of the marijuana users, adolescents in that state, not for medical use, for recreational use, had gone up significantly. And every single one of them told me, well, don't tell me I shouldn't be doing it. My parents do it, and they got a medical card, so it must be safe. Well, lo and behold, the Montana legislature finally is beginning to understand what's going on there. They have not, under any way, properly regulatized or set up a licensing system. So basically, in Montana, almost anybody can get a green card that wants it. And it has basically taught the lesson to their younger kids, it's okay to do marijuana. The legislature yesterday or the day before 
voted the House on a two to one vote, Republicans versus Democrats, 60 something to 30 something, to repeal the proposition, which was a voter based initiation. This would be a huge change for Montana. Number one, they're overturning a voter based initiation. And number two, what they're basically doing is saying uh, to a lot of other states that are thinking about this, we've lived through it. We've done it. We don't like the results, and we're going to turn it around. So I think this is, in fact, a huge social story for the United States. Well, it seems to me that uh, what's happened in Montana is in 2004, the state, by 62 percent, uh, voted an initiative to uh, institute medical marijuana for people that needed it. And then what happened was, after the voters put this initiative through, the state did nothing to properly regulate any kind of medical marijuana access. And what's happened over the last year is the number of people applying for green cards went from 7,000 to 28,000. And now there's been a, a tremendous uh, scare campaign put through by many members of law enforcement and some people in the legislature to say that uh, marijuana's run amok. I mean, let me give you an example. Steve, what I saw was not a scare campaign. It was kids face to face with me, and you know as well as I do, I rarely talk about marijuana when I talk with kids. It's about pharmaceutical drugs, because those are the killers in the United States. But kids would bring up to me the issue of marijuana and basically challenge me. How can you say there's any harm to marijuana when my parents are using it at home in front of me with a green card. Well, Do you think that's a healthy system? No, I certainly don't condone the use of marijuana in front of uh, minors. I think that that is inappropriate behavior. But uh, Mike Milburn, the House Speaker, quoted a narcotics officer who said that medical ma marijuana is now a one billion dollar industry in Montana. And Montana is now a major source country, along with Mexico and Colombia. Uh, I don't know that gentleman, but my guess is he's uh, smoking something that he shouldn't be himself. All right. That, those are silly figures, and you know that, Steve. Steve, you know there are idiots on your side, and there are idiots on my side, and hopefully you and I can bring some rash of sensibility and not listen to the idiots on either side screaming about stuff that just ain't so. That guy, and I don't know him, and I apologize to him for personalizing it, he clearly made those numbers up. He has no clue what he's talking about. Look, when I talk to kids, I try to be honest. When I talk to students, with when you and I do the heads v. feds, we both try to be honest. I think we should all be honest in this issue, and that's how you come to a fair resolution. People like that don't help. Well, we ought to say, too, that um, it's still got to go before the Senate yep. uh, before any final decisions are made. And if this is overturned, it'll be the first voter initiative in the history of Montana to be overturned. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the program so far? at the college where we're at, and you see how these crazy Canadians dress. It's about 15 below zero. This dude has a t-shirt on. Does it say recording? Is there a red light?